Hello, I'm John Treadgold from the Finance News Network and joining me from Hills is its Managing Director and CEO, Ted Pretty. Ted, welcome to FNN. Good afternoon, John. You've just released results for the first half of 2015. What were the highlights and what were some of the lowlights? The highlight of the period was the underlying net profit after tax uh, for the half, which was $9.5 million. And the fully frank dividend we've declared at 2.1 cents a share. The low lights, I think, were the comparison that some people made between this first half result in FY15 and the one we achieved in FY14, which included steel assets which we owned at the time. Now, if you net those out, we've actually had a very solid performance, and we sold those steel assets for, uh, assets for $80 million and sort of paid down our debt. So it's a bit disappointing that the market didn't understand the difference between the two halves. And what contribution did acquisitions have on the first half? In our core business, the revenues were largely flat on an underlying basis period on period. But the acquisitions, which we had the benefit of in this half, accounted for an increase in revenues of 11%. Now, your stock was heavily sold on the release of the first half results. Were you expecting this? What do you intend to do to reverse this trend? And would you consider a share buyback? I think the situation with the results was this confusion around first half 14 against first half 15, and so that was disappointing. Uh, We were disappointed with the sell-off because we telegraphed to the market as late as November last year that these 12 months would be challenging due to the significant decline in the Australian dollar, and we import a great deal of that product. So we've seen a decline of about 20% in the Aussie dollar, but we've been able to pass some of that on through price increases and also cost cutting. But this was well flagged to the market at the time of our AGM. What's happened now is the share price has declined over the last two days. We're now trading at a round book value, which is very cheap. And so we announced today uh, that we would reopen our buyback. What stage is the company now at in terms of evolving away from its non-core businesses? We're well down that path. As, As we indicated in the results, we're now in the process where all of the industrial assets have been sold. We've divested also the non, other non-core assets, which included the home hardware businesses. And so we're largely a technology hardware and equipment company. And now we're looking for growth in related markets, particularly around health technology. Uh, the real uh, question for us is when we will make the next large acquisition to confirm this strategy. And what sectors have been the focus of your growth strategies? Hmm. Uh, security is obviously a big sector, security and wellbeing. Uh, Health and health technology, the health market is growing significantly at double digit rates with an aging population, um, with the increased costs of of provision of healthcare, both in hospitals, in aged care facilities, in the home. We think there there are very good markets out there that we can address, both with our existing core products, as well as these new range of health and monitoring products which we're supplying into the market today. So you've been looking at acquisitions. What sort of timing can we expect? Look, I think we're about six months behind where I would have liked to be, and I I made that point to the market. I think one of the analysts said today that management should be given time to execute on that strategy, um, and I think that's fair. Um, I don't want to uh, actually specify a time when we will do that because it's more important to find the right acquisition rather than being compelled to fit within a certain time frame. What capacity do you have for these acquisitions? Well, in terms of capacity, we've just uh, renewed uh, our banking facilities. We've got a $110 million uh, banking facility with three banks, uh, and we've also uh, negotiated, but not yet signed, a further acquisition facility with the same banks. But just to emphasise the point, we finished December 31 with no debt. We actually were net cash. So we have all of those banking facilities that are available for working capital or acquisitions, and they Together, they would exceed 200 million. You've stated a preference for transactions offering high returns. Does that entail exposure to risk? Look, I think if you're moving into any high growth area, there's a little bit of element of more risk and also if you're expanding into new growth platforms. But at the end of the day, if we were to lever the balance sheet again, we want to buy businesses with high growth profile and characteristics, and we'd like to buy solid earnings as well. So um, you will find us focusing in that healthcare area on the businesses that have those particular characteristics.
You've revised your forecast NPAT target for FY15 to between $18.5 million and $19.5 million. What's driving this and what do you intend to do? Well, look, with the Aussie dollar down in the, the high 70s, which is about 20% where it was 12 months ago, we are um, under a somewhat of pressure in terms of the products we're importing today. That's driving, uh, to a large measure, the reduced guidance for the year. Having said that, economic activity as confirmed by the Reserve Bank is at a lower level than people anticipated, thus the recent rate cuts that we've seen in the economy. Unless we see more federal and state infrastructure and commercial development, um, it is probably going to be a tough 12 months for us. And we've, uh, we've flagged that to the market in November. I still think that's the case. And I suspect that most companies in the Australian market at the moment are nervous about the prospects of the economy over the next 12 months. Finally, what do you see are the fundamentals of the business that you think investors should focus on? The fundamentals are, are very simple. The restructure is complete. The balance sheet is clean. We have we finished December with uh, no debt in a, ca in a positive cash position. We have ample banking facilities for acquisitions. We are still forecasting a net profit after tax of 18.5 to 19.5 for the full year. We are carrying a little bit of overhead to support potential um, acquisitions. We don't believe that we should reduce that in any significant way, but we will make some cost adjustments if we need to, if those acquisition opportunities are delayed. Ted Pretty, thank you for the update from Hills. Thanks very much.